From artificial intelligence in the arts to security in the cloud, we're going to run through the top 10 technology trends that you should know for 2023. We're here with Alibaba Cloud Director Luika Mack to hear more about these technologies that could transform the way we work, the cities we live in, and help protect our climate in the coming years. Thank you for joining us, Luika. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Could you give us a little bit more context? Mm -hmm. Whose list is this and um, what, how did they select the entries? So uh, Dharma Academy is Alibaba Group's uh, global international um, research arm. So every year they would select 10 emerging technology that is going to hold the greatest potential for uh, mainstream adoption in the coming years. So based on the, a lot of the research papers, patent findings and also interviewing uh, over 100 scientists and specialists in their field, they would select this top 10 trend. So based on also all the studies and um, all the criteria they set together, list of criteria would include uh, industrialization, the degree of it, uh, social values, um, the tech visibility as well. Sat within Alibaba, mm -hmm. like we are, mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of these trends coming out of Demo Academy and a lot of, um, lot of the research that you've talked about. What would you say their key research specialities are? Well, um, Dharma actually stands for uh, discovery, adventure, momentum and outlook. Its vision and mission is really to explore the unknown uh, through scientific and technical research and in innovation. So they cover quite a lot of a large area, including robotics, which very often we've seen in autonomous driving, machine learning, uh, we've seen a lot of application in natural language processing, as well as uh, image search, which we are famous for. And uh, of course, for the fundamental, the computing layer on the data analytics, etc. Let's get stuck into the list, shall mm -hmm. we? On top of the list I can see is generative AI. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how this technology mm -hmm. is going to change content creation in the future? So um, AI as we know it tends to be referring to the um, using AI to analyse existing data. But in the future, we believe that uh, AI can be used to create content, like you said. So generative AI actually can create new and original content based on different types of data, whether they are in text, images, uh, videos, audios, etc. Basically, in the future, if you have a smartphone, you will have the potential to be an art curator, if you like. And in the next two to three years, we think that the um, application and services of generative AI would be more inclusive because they're going to be more interactive, more secure and more intelligent. OK, hold up. So videos, that's that's what I do. Yeah. So, um, but are they won't be able to do it as, bad, as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they will be helping us, not replacing us, right? Totally, yeah. Here we're talking primarily about gaming, mm -hmm. advertising, graphic design potentially mm -hmm. being disrupted. That's true, yeah, mm. you're right. Generative AI is not actually a new concept. Mm. It has been around for um, almost a decade now. Mm. However, the technology has evolved so much in the next couple of years, particularly like you pointed out in advertising, gaming, in writing. Mm. So currently, a lot of people in those industries would be using generative AI for writing drafts and also producing prototypes. But as we briefly touched on earlier, we predicted that the technology would be more interactive, so they would be more widely adopted. Interesting. I mean, that sounds like a tool I could, I could use. Okay. <laughs> um, switching gears a bit, yeah. Alibaba wants to hit carbon neutrality by mm -hmm. 2030. That's correct. So how will the next entry on this list machine learning mm -hmm. help ease that transition to say renewable energy. Mm. So one of the challenges for renewable energy is the fact that they're highly unpredictable, right? Solar, hydro, wind, you can't really, um, or let's say utility companies find it hard to integrate them into their power grid. Mm. So uh, with uh, AI technology combined with the mathematical calculations, very often we call them the dual engine approach, can be used to help make decisions faster, more accurate um, and more effective. Mm. So in other words, with the dual engine approach, we can help utility companies to uh, make more uh, accurate forecasts in a more timely manner. 
So moving forward in the future, this kind of technology can be applied to other areas such as logistics, like airport parking, as well as even day-to-day -day manufacturing process. So looking ahead, um, Demo predicts that um, we're all going to be a bit more cloud native in the, in the coming years and we're going to feel more secure about it, they mm -hmm. say as well. Can you tell us more? Yeah, sure. So Not just Damo, in fact, a lot of the analyst firms such as Gartner mm. has pre uh, predicted that uh, by 2025, in two years time, 85% of the uh, organizations would be embracing what we call the cloud first approach and 95% of the newly created digital workload will be on cloud native platform. 95%? Exactly, yeah. So it's a huge amount of uh, um, uh, increment at the mm. moment, or in, rather in 2021, the percentage was, was only 30%. Oh, that's a huge growth. The benefit of cloud native is really to provide a very consistent environment for the developers to build new technology, new apps, mm improving on existing one, but more importantly, to connect them all together, whether you're on private cloud, public cloud or hybrid cloud. Mm. So when it comes to it, a lot of this application will become uh, based on the cloud native platform and you want your application to be more secure, to be trusted and reliable. So on that front, uh, we see that uh, security will be built into every stages of the software development cycle rather than an afterthought. In other words, our application and our usage should be more protected. I think it's a truism to mm -hmm. say now that algorithms are transforming industries, I mean, media for one, obviously. Yeah. Um, but looking at it from the other way around, uh, how will we be training the AIs going forward? Yeah, so that's a great question. So uh, like us, human beings have developed different senses for us to better understand the world. We also expect AI to learn from different sources before they can make decisions or take action. So we expect AI to be learning from different formats of data, whether it's numbers, uh, images, voices, speeches, etc. So on that, uh, we have a new technology called multi-modular pre-trained models. What they do is they can process data in different formats simultaneously, but also adding the cognitive uh, intelligence capability. So computers and AI can be, um, can be better at understanding our reasoning, uh, answering questions more intelligently, and also better at summarizing scenarios. So for example, in the corporate world, you know, AI can actually help improve productivity with a, um, a better reasoning. Uh, we all have to be more productive these <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not the best photographer in the world and my social media presence is <laughs> suffering for it probably. Um, will technology ride to our rescue with mm -hmm. um, the next item on this list, computational imaging. Mm -hmm. I think uh, both you and I are not uh, uh, great with photography, but nowadays on the smartphone, we can see a lot of uh, new functions that yeah. really help us turning a smartphone into a traditional professional camera, so without the lenses and tripod, etc. So functions such as low lighting imaging would be very useful in nowadays the, the uh, photography or consumer photography. However, we also see that computational imaging can be useful for a professional such as healthcare and autonomous driving when uh, the quality of the images is going to be key for their success. In the future, um, we, industries, algorithms are all creating more and more data. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, how will machines manage it all and where are all those terabytes going to sit? Yeah, well you have a good point on uh, the, the rapidly increasing amount of data. So particularly, um, a lot of those data are no longer just attaching to the computer, right? It's going to be from all over the world. Hmm. So uh, we believe that processing in memory, in other words, the integration of the center processing unit um, CPU is going to be integrated with a memory in one chip. In one single chip, data can be directly processed, which means that a lot of the energy will be saved, time will be saved, and also it will lead to the uh, shifting of the computing-centric architecture into data-centric. Well, after we talk all the items on AI and uh, IoT, Internet of Things, it's all based on data. So we need data to be processed much faster and directly in memory. So that is going to uh, change significantly for the next generation of cloud computing. Mm -hmm. 
So more efficient and energy saving. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Um, look, Luika, scanning this, the rest of the list, we've not hit all of them yet. <laughs> so can you sum up some of the remaining entries? Sounds fascinating. What's a chiplet? Yep. <laughs> and um, this other one, um, large scale urban digital twins. Tell yep. us more. Quite a how to, right? <laughs> uh, so, Chiplet is actually uh, powered by a new technology called advanced packaging technologies. Our scientists believe that uh, it's going to change the R&D process for integrated circuits and also changing the landscape of the chip industry. Uh, and more interesting for the uh, large scale urban digital twins, it's going to uh, redefine city planning. We probably have seen quite a lot of um, those progress in recent years, including in uh, smart traffic, in uh, disaster prevention and management. More often now, uh, looking at how they can help with uh, carbon neutrality, achieving their goals for countries and organizations. Right? So in the future, we believe that uh, the large scale urban digital twins is going to be more autonomous and, um, and multidimensional to make it more effective for uh, planning in other areas as well. Thank you so much, Luika, for your time and for your insights. It's been great having you on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you everybody for joining us and wishing you all a great 2023.